Hello everybody, welcome to our today's uh, video and today our topic is 5G and our physical world. This is one of the most important topics in understanding uh, 5G and our technology because it will give you the knowledge to understand how the physical uh, channels work, how the information is mapped onto the radio architecture and how it is basically transmitted on your UE and on your e node field. We will discuss uh, the numerology, that is your subcarrier spacing. We will also discuss the time domain structure. We will discuss the time slot structure and the frame structures of 5G NR and how basically we have that flexible subcarrier spacing in order to provide different key functionalities for your 5G NR. So let's begin and find out what are the basics for LTE physical layer. So, one of the key aspects for 5G NR is that we are still using the OTMA symbol as we were using in LTE. And for your help, I have given the link for the LTE physical layer in the description of the video so that you can basically uh, move from your LTE information to understand your 5G information and what are the differences. So the uh, access scheme is still OFTMA. However, the subcarrier, there's a big difference between subcarrier spacing and in 5G, we have flexible subcarrier uh, spacing. So what does, what does that mean? That means that in LTE, we have 15 kilohertz of subcarrier spacing in frequency and that is fixed. So basically you have 15 kilohertz of subcarrier and then 180 kilohertz for a resource block. However, in 5G, uh, the specifications have introduced a new uh, parameter that is called mu. This mu is the basic uh, parameter that uh, basically governs the entire frame structure and the numerology, subcarrier spacing, slot structure for 5G. So we have flexible options for subcarrier spacing and those are given by the value of mu. So we have mu is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in order to calculate your subcarrier spacing, uh, we have a formula that is 2 mu into delta f. And now this delta f is your old LT carrier spacing, that is delta f is equal to 15 kilohertz. So for 0, you have 15, for 1, you have 30, 2, you have 60, for 3, you have 120, for 4, you have 1, you have 240. So basically, the first difference that 5G has, that it has multiple subcarrier uh, spacings available, that is from 15 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz to 120 kilohertz and to 240 kilohertz. What is the reason? for this multiple uh, subcarrier spacings. The reason is that 5G has to de be deployed in a low frequency, that is up till 6 gigahertz. Then it also has to be deployed in high frequency, that is your millimeter. So what we are doing is that these first three, usually the first three ones, they are used for the low frequency and the last two are being used for your high frequency and these provide protection against the Doppler shift as you increase the frequency. One thing to note here is that your resource block will still be of 12 subcarriers into your, that will be into your subcarrier So for a resource block can be 180 kilohertz, a resource block can be 360 kilohertz, a resource block can be 720 kilohertz, and as we move on further. So basically that is the first difference between 5G and LTE. Secondly, how you basically calculate the number of resource blocks. As you can see in the video that I uh, have provided the link for in the, uh, in the description, in LTE, you have fixed subcarrier and then you have a fixed resource block width. In 
5G, you do not have a fixed clip carrier length. You can have multiple options. So you have multiple options for your resource block width. And in 5G, you do not have the number of resource blocks for a particular channel bandwidth. Basically, you have a min and max for the number of resource blocks for a particular value of mu. So for mu 0, 1, 2, and 3, the minimum resource blocks that you can have are 24 in your grid and the maximum number of resource blocks that you can have are 275. And for your number 4 option, the minimum is 24 and the max is 138. So that will how your resource blocks will work in your uh, 5G. Next comes, this was the frequency domain, next comes the time domain. So in time domain, basically, you have the same big frame that is 10 millisecond and you have the same subframe that is 1 millisecond and one frame is consists uh, basically made up of 10 subframes that is 1 millisecond. The difference comes how you, you put in data in this subframe and that is basically governed by this parameter mu. So what happens is that if your mu is equal to 0, so how you will calculate the number of slots. So in this subframe, you can have basically one slot, two slots, four slots, eight slots, and 16 slots. And if you need to map it to your, uh, the mu factor, that is 2 raised to power mu. So that is 2 raised to power 0, that's 2 raised to power 1, that's 2 raised to power 2, 2 raised to power 3, 2 raised to power 8. So for a subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz, you have one slot for this one subframe. For a mu of 30, so you have, if you have a subcarrier spacing of 30 kilohertz, you have two slots in one subframe. And if this one millisecond is fixed. So in the first place, you will have your slot length in time is one millisecond. But in your second one, your slot length goes to 0.5 millisecond. And in this one, where you have four slots, it goes to 0.25 millisecond and it reduces further. <coughs> Why we have reduced length, for, length in time for slots for latency purposes? And I will explain you how that <coughs> the number of OFDM symbols, OFDM symbols in one slot is 14. <coughs> so if the time period of one subframe is fixed at one millisecond and we have one slot, for example, if you are considering the case of 15 kilohertz, so we will have 14 OFDM symbols here because we have one slot. If we have a carrier subspacing of 30 kilohertz, we will have two slots in the same one millisecond, <coughs> sorry, and therefore we have 28 OFDM symbols and therefore the symbol period of those OFDM symbols will reduce and that will give us low latency where we need to transmit data and the round trip delay time between the transmitting and the receiving side should be very small. And that will be in your applications as connected cars and other connected devices where you have to make decisions very quickly and therefore you have your edge uh, computing part in 5G and your OFDM symbol length is very small to provide that latency to the particular uh, device. So after all this, as you can see on the screen, the frame structure as well, the difference of 5G and where it provides you all the cap capability is the flexibility in how you basically can have different subcarrier spacings and also in the, uh, the difference where you can have different slots in the same subframe of one millisecond. So you can reduce your slot time period from one millisecond to <coughs> in very below uh, in the range of uh, microseconds and basically provide a large amount of OFDM symbols with very small durations. In terms of frame structure, it is the same 10 millisecond and 1 millisecond frame and subframe 
and the same resource blocks and the same subcarriers, but with flexible uh, options in both frequency and the time domain. I hope uh, this will help you understand uh, the transmission the, uh, the transmission methods in 5G NR. And in our next videos, we will show you how we map physical channels and how the physical channels can be basically mapped onto these uh, resource elements. And the resource element definition will be the same as one subcarrier onto one uh, slot. And that slot, of course, in 5G can vary. And also, uh, we have in 5G specifications that which channel can be mapped onto which type of mu. So, I hope uh, this video has helped you. And uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos on 5G and LT. And I will meet you uh, again with our uh, new video very short soon. Thank you.